if now if I'm driving in traffic and somebody gives me the finger, I automatically default to there's a call for love. Guy must be stressed. Maybe he's on the way to pick up his kids and there he's late. Maybe something. I automatically move to how can I be the soothing bomb? Can you feel how there's very little room in that for discontent? And now allow yourself to see something that's really important, this fundamental foundational truth of what forgiveness is. All it is is seeing rightly that had you've been connected to the degree that is possible, knowing yourself as unconditional love, then the circumstances that you experienced in the past quite possibly would never have happened. Because when someone gives a call for love in the form of projection and anger and meanness and orneriness and all those things, then you're being unconditional love. It doesn't seem to you like it's an assault. It feels more like a call for love. Remember, if only love is real and nothing real can be threatened, herein lies the peace of the divine, the only way to live in a state of true peace. Then that means that there's only one of two things going on. Either you're in a state of love or forgiveness, and if you're in a state of forgiveness, this is what it feels like. You see everyone who's out there that's maybe projecting and maybe angry and maybe wants it their way. And there's this divisiveness and this polarization that's being played upon right now in the world's good news, gets people captivated, makes some people a little bit of money. If you are focused on that polarization or problem, then you're in the world of separation very clear, black and white. If you are focused on someone winning, someone losing, black and white, it is polarization. Instead, if you're seeing clearly and you're connected the way that you just were in the meditation, you're seeing either love, opportunity to love, or a call for love, opportunity to love. Do you understand now when people talk about oneness in spiritual worlds and spiritual circle, this is what it means? You know, I read so many books and I saw so many scriptures and I saw so many things that referred to this from the time I was a little kid about oneness. And it wasn't until I, and my path, my own firsthand path is this path of forgiveness, by the way. It's how I woke up. I doggedly, that hiding that Course in Miracles under my couch, well, almost every lesson is forgive, forgive, forgive this. Either you're loving it or you're forgiving it. I didn't know that at the time, but I really, truly, sincerely went wholeheartedly into this. And then somewhere along the way, I, since my world was falling apart because I was trying to keep it all together, you know, all these little threads together with my ego still running the show because that's all I knew. That's all most of us know because we've been conditioned into a life where the egos are hero. And then along the way, someone said to me, as I went for counseling, I found uh, my life was falling apart. So I found um, I was channeling, uh, you know, what people call channeling. I don't typically call that channeling. I just see it as mm, the voice of the divine um, in communication with me every day, all day now. But then in order to hear it more clearly, because I, I was like, is this, am I, what am I hearing? And I, I wasn't as connected or tuned in. It's like tuning into a radio station. I wasn't as connected at that time because I didn't know that we had this inner being that's constantly the voice of our own best interest guiding us and teaching us along the way. And so I started to write and I knew that I was writing really beautiful things. So that we were like, wow, I can really write here, but it was not my typical way of perceiving or experiencing the world. And so I started, I said, well, maybe this is a career change for me. <laughs> this is how unconscious I was because 
I started doing the Course in Miracles to, to, I was a commercial actor at the time and thought I'd get more commercials. And what I really wanted was a national commercial because they pay your residuals thousands of dollars that you don't have to do anything, but the one commercial and it keeps on coming in over the years, especially if you get a Christmas commercial because they show every year around the holidays or a holiday commercial. So my idea when I first saw this was I'll be happy if I have this residual money coming in, you know, it's paving my way and all these other things in my life were contingent upon that as my source of happiness. Little did I know that there was this path to awakening that I was being called to. So as I'm writing these beautiful things, I thought, well, maybe this is a career change. I'm still focused on career. And I thought, well, I'm writing really beautiful things. Maybe I should start writing. And I went to a class at the Boston Center for Adult Education. That was a writing class. I loved the class. But on my way out, on the bulletin board was a card from someone that said, couples counseling, a course in miracles. And it was very interesting because I knew that my world was falling apart and I didn't know how to explain this to my husband. It wasn't that he was doing anything wrong. I'm starting to see more clearly that, look, I'm the source of my own problems here. I wasn't projecting onto him any longer, but still I didn't know what is going on. My life is being pulled apart here. And so I wound up in counseling, we, we both did in counseling with this wonderful man. And I wanted it to be a man because I wanted it to be e equal playing field because I knew A Course in Miracles. My husband didn't, I was hiding it and he's a man. So I figured, okay, that's an equal playing field. So we started talking and the, I started speaking with this counselor and the interesting thing was by that time, I had already been doing the lessons of A Course in Miracles for oh, probably two and a half years. So I had the words down. I had the idea down. I didn't know it though. I think everyone here can understand what I'm saying when I knew I didn't know what this book was saying because it just didn't hit me in the core. But man, could I speak the words. And so he said, well, you know this. And I said, I don't know this because we were speaking one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. And I said, I don't, I don't know this. If it, it says, you know, be the light of the world today, I try. But by the end of the day, I'm, I'm giving somebody the finger or cursing somebody out. And, and then he said to me, I said, so you mean to tell me that you can be happy all the time? that you're happy all the time. And he said to me, I have goosebumps. He didn't really answer my question, but in that moment I said, if he could do it, I can do it. If that is possible on planet earth, if anyone can be happy all the time, I'm doing it. I'm finding out how to do that. And the interesting thing is, is that it is possible. Now I can tell you because I know this is possible because I've been in an experience then 28 years in now after that, where it's all in our perception. It's all in what we're seeing. So for instance, going back to how this looks on a practical, tangible level, if now, if I'm driving in traffic and somebody gives me the finger, I automatically default to there's a call for love. Guy must be stressed. Maybe he's on the way to pick up his kids and there he's late. Maybe something. I automatically move to how can I be the soothing bomb? And you feel how there's very little room in that for discontent. Can you feel how our identity is everything? How when we show up knowing we are the solution, that we are the divinity, because everybody is, but we just forgot. Now I remember, remember, I'm reminding myself on a daily basis all day, every day, who I am. And I have to tell you, it's a hoot. It's a joke. Because how fun is this? 
to be in a place where all kinds of drama and things and challenges and pain come up on a daily basis, but to remember always who everyone is. Anyone who has a firsthand experience of life around Maureen knows that I'm not going to buy into anyone's drama ever. So when people come to me in their life's greatest pain, happy, happy day, because I'm not going to waver from my peace for anyone's drama. And my peace is I see you, I see you, I know you, that's not you. That ego limiting idea or voice or habit or thing you've been practicing for a long time, maybe since you were a little child as part of your identity, that limiting belief, I will not believe that about you. And then what that looks like for people is that sometimes it looks like a dumb blonde. <laughs> sometimes it looks like somebody who is, how the heck are you so peaceful? I remember, um, especially in the beginning of this, when, you know, now I have this background hama of bliss, it's sort of like always there. But in the beginning, it was blow me away bliss because it was such a contrast between what I have lived in the past and what it was like. So I went into the post office one day, I remember, and the guy and post offices, um, I've had lots of friends who worked in post offices and things, but post offices can be notorious for people who are having a challenging time, at least in, back in the past a little bit too. And so I remember I walked into the post office one day and the guy behind the the um, window said to me, what are you so happy for? What are you always so happy for? Why are you so happy? And I said, why not? And I really truly meant it. Like, why not? Like, what do we gain from choosing to be unhappy? So again, this might sound strange and a little bit crazy and a little bit not possible, but I am telling you, you should do the same thing I did. If she can do it, I can do it. Because that's the human condition being led to unconditional love.